Hello everyone, welcome to the second lecture video for the subject General Chemistry 1. And still, this is our Sir Brian who will do the lecture for this session. Before starting, please make sure to have the following your writing materials and your periodic table. So at the end of the of this session, you will be able to first name covalent compounds given their formula and write the formula given the name of the covalent compound. In this particular topic, we will be dealing with covalent compounds. During our last uh, session, we already uh, discussed how to name and write formula for ionic compounds. So a covalent compound results when nonmetals share electrons. Thus, covalent compounds exist as molecules. So covalent compounds, if you can remember, uh, if you can still remember during our last discussion when we uh, compared a covalent and ionic compound, covalent compounds are the combination of uh, two nonmetal elements. Unlike for uh, ionic compound, they are combination of a metal and a non-metal element. So to identify if a given compound is a covalent compound, just check if the elements in the, co in the compound are non-metals. So the compound should be made of two non-metals. So in this example, we have N2O3 and N is nitrogen, which is a non-metal and Oxygen is also a non-metal element. So let's start naming this uh, given example. So we have N2O3. So our first step is to, for the first element, start with the element name. So our first element is nitrogen. So we'll start with nitrogen. Now for the second element, start with the IDE name. And our second element is Oxygen, so it's oxide. So we have nitrogen oxide. Now, I uh, use prefixes to show how many atoms of each type are there. So you are already uh, have knowledge on the different prefixes. And it's very simple. So these are the prefixes that we will use. 1 for mono, 2 di, 3 tri, 4 tetra, 5 penta, 6 hexa, 7 hepta, 8 octa, 9 nona, and 10 deca. So we have, since we have 2 here for nitrogen, we have di nitrogen, then we have 3 for oxy oxygen, and this is the second element. We should use the IDE name, so we have trioxide. So we have di nitrogen trioxide. So we have nitrogen, we also have oxide since we have two nitrogen, so we'll name it as di-nitrogen. And since we have three oxygen, we will use the oxide name of oxygen since it's the second element. We have three, so trioxide. So that is the name for this uh, compound, di-nitrogen trioxide. For the second example, we have P4S10. P refers to phosphorus and S refers to sulfur. Now, since we have four for uh, phosphorus, we have, we will use tetra. Tetra phosphorus phosphorus and we have 10 sulfur. And we will use the IDE name for the second element, so it's sulfide. And since its subscript is 10, so it's deca. So the name for this compound is tetraphosphorus decasulfide. Now for our third example, we have carbon and fluorine. So we have carbon as the first element. Now for the second element, we have fluorine and we will use the IDE name. So it's fluoride. 
Now, since we have four as the subscript of fluorine, we'll use the prefix tetra. Now, for the carbon, it has no subscript. So, that means it has one as subscript. So, we will use mono. So, is it correct if the name of this compound is monocarbon tetrafluoride? So, let's proceed. Okay, so, rule number four, do not use mono on the first element. So, it should be carbon tetrafluoride. So, the name for this uh, compound is carbon tetrafluoride. We will not use mono for carbon because it's the rule. Next, we have phosphorus and chlorine. Now we have no subscript for phosphorus, so we will have phosphorus and chlorine is our second element, so let's use the IDE name. It's chloride, and since it has five as its subscript. So it's penta chloride. So it's phosphorus penta chloride. For our next example, we have chlorine and oxygen. So we have chlorine. And since it has two as its subscript, so we have dichlorine. Then, we have oxygen as our second element, so we will use the IDE name, so it's oxide. And since 7 is its subscript, so we have heptaoxide. So, is this correct? So, let's uh, see. So, we have rule number 5. If you have AO or OO, turn it into O. So in this case, we have dichlorine heptaoxide. So it's AO, heptaoxide. So we will turn it into O. So we have dichlorine hep. It's not hepta anymore. We will use O. Heptoxide. So it's dichlorine heptoxide. So that is the name for this uh, example. Next, we have P4O6. So P refers to phosphorus so we have phosphorus and since the subscript for phosphorus is phosphorus subscript for phosphorus is 4 so we will use tetra then we have here oxygen as our second element the id name for oxygen is oxide then since its subscript is 6, so we'll use hexa. And again, in our rule number 5, if we have AO, we will use O instead. So, we have hexos. We have hexoxide. So, the name for this compound is tetraphosphorus hexoxide. So for the next example, we have CO. So we have carbon and oxygen. So our first element is carbon. We'll use its original name. And according to the rule, we will not put mono anymore for the first element if its subscript is 1. Then our second element is oxygen. And its IDE name is oxide and doesn't have any subscript, so that's that's that means it's 
1 so it's mono but then we cannot use mono oxide we will turn this into 1 o so it's monoxide so the name for this compound is carbon monoxide now uh, please uh, answer these practice uh, problems in your notebooks then if you have questions or clarifications you can post them in the discussion board try also uh, writing the formula for this given uh, compounds and uh, this one you can also try answering these uh, problems so that's it for our uh, discussion on naming and writing the formula for covalent compounds